Hey Alpha Nurses, I'm Nurse Sandro from alphanurseguide.com. This is NCLEX Peer Review Lesson 16. We're going to be doing gastrointestinal disorder questions. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok to get any updates. Links will be in the description. Without the way, let's get started. Question 1. After a liver biopsy, the nurse should place the client in which position? A. Trendelenburg and on the left side. B. Prone with the head of the bed, in a flat position. C. Supine with the head of the bed, at a 30-degree angle. D. A right-side lying position, with a small pillow or folded towel under the puncture site. The correct answer is D. A right-side lying position with a small pillow or folded towel under the puncture site. Rationale. After a liver biopsy, the client is assisted with assuming a right-side lying position, with a small pillow or folded towel under the puncture site for at least three hours. Options A, B, and C are incorrect positions. Question 2. The nurse is assisting with the insertion of a nasogastric tube into a client. The nurse should place the client in which position for insertion? A. Right side. B. Low Fowler's position. C. High Fowler's position. D. Supine, with the head flat. The correct answer is C. High Fowler's position. Rationale. During the insertion of a nasogastric tube, the client is placed in a sitting or high Fowler's position to reduce the risk of pulmonary aspiration if the client should vomit. Options A, B, and D do not facilitate the insertion of the tube or prevent aspiration. Question 3. The nurse is checking a client for the correct placement of a nasogastric tube. The nurse aspirates the client's stomach contents and checks its pH level. Which pH value indicates the correct placement of the tube? A. 3.5 B. 4.5 C. 6.0 D. 7.35 the correct answer is A, 3.5. Rationale, if the NG tube is in the stomach, the pH of the contents will be acidic. Options B and C indicate a slightly acidic pH. Option D indicates a neutral pH. Question 4. The nurse is preparing to assist with removing a nasogastric tube from the client. The nurse should reinforce instructing the client to perform which action? A. Exhale. B. Inhale and exhale quickly. C. Take and hold a deep breath. D. Perform Valsalva's maneuver. The correct answer is C. Take and hold a deep breath. Rationale. When the NG tube is removed, the client is instructed to take and hold a deep breath. This will close the epiglottis and the airway will be temporarily obstructed during the tube removal. This allows for the easy withdrawal of the tube through the esophagus into the nose. The tube is removed with one very smooth, continuous pull. Options A, B, and D are incorrect. Question 5. The nurse is caring for a client with a diagnosis of chronic gastritis. The nurse anticipates that the client is at risk for which vitamin deficiency? A. Vitamin A. B. Vitamin C. C. Vitamin E. D. Vitamin B12. The correct answer is D. Vitamin B12. Rationale, deterioration, and atrophy of the lining of the stomach lead to the loss of function of the parietal cells. When the acid secretion decreases, the source of the intrinsic factor is lost, which results in the inability to absorb vitamin B12. This leads to the development of pernicious anemia. Options A, B, and C are incorrect. Question 6. The nurse is caring for a client after a bill wrote to procedure. On review of the postoperative prescriptions, which should the nurse clarify? A. Leg exercises. B. Early ambulation. C. Irrigating the nasogastric tube. D. Coughing and deep breathing exercises. 
The correct answer is C, irrigating the nasogastric tube. Rationale, in a bill wrote to resection, the proximal remnant of the stomach is anastomosed to the proximal jejunum. Patency of the NG tube is critical for preventing the retention of gastric secretions. The nurse, however, should never irrigate or reposition the gastric tube after gastric surgery unless specifically prescribed by the health care provider. In this situation, the nurse should clarify the prescription. Options A, B, and D are appropriate postoperative interventions. Question 7. The nurse is reinforcing discharge instructions to a client after a gastrectomy. Which measure should the nurse include in client teaching to help prevent dumping syndrome? A. Ambulate after a meal. B. Eat high-carbohydrate foods. C. Limit the fluids taken with meals. D. Sit in a high fowler's position during meals. The correct answer is C. Limit the fluids taken with meals. Rationale, the client should be instructed to decrease the amount of fluid taken at meals. The client should also be instructed to avoid high-carbohydrate foods, including fluids such as fruit nectars, assume a low fowler's position during meals, lie down for 30 minutes after eating, to delay gastric emptying, and take antispasmodics as prescribed. Question 8. The nurse is monitoring a client for the early signs and symptoms of dumping syndrome. Which indicates this occurrence? A. Sweating and pallor. B. Dry skin and stomach pain. C. Bradycardia and indigestion. D. Double vision and chest pain. The correct answer is A. Sweating and pallor. Rationale. Early manifestations occur 5 to 30 minutes after eating. Symptoms include vertigo, tachycardia, syncope, sweating, pallor, palpitations, and the desire to lie down. Question 9. The nurse is reviewing the record of a client with Crohn's disease. Which stool characteristic should the nurse expect to see documented in the record? A. Diarrhea. B. Constipation. C. Bloody stools. D. Stool constantly oozing. The correct answer is A. Diarrhea. Rationale, Crohn's disease is characterized by non-bloody diarrhea of usually not more than four or five stools daily. Over time, the diarrhea episodes increase in frequency, duration, and severity. Options B, C, and D are not characteristics of Crohn's disease. Question 10. The nurse is reviewing the prescriptions of a client admitted to the hospital with a diagnosis of acute pancreatitis. Which interventions should the nurse expect to note? Select all that apply. A. Administer antacids as prescribed. B. Encourage small, frequent, high-calorie feedings. C. Encourage coughing and deep breathing. D. Administer anticholinergics as prescribed. E. Maintain the client in a supine and flat position. The correct answers are A. Administer antacids as prescribed, C. Encourage coughing and deep breathing, and D. Administer anticholinergics as prescribed. Rationale, abdominal pain is a prominent symptom of pancreatitis, pain medication will be prescribed. Some clients experience lessened pain by assuming positions that flex the trunk and draw the knees up to the chest. A side-lying position, with the head elevated 45 degrees, decreases tension on the abdomen and may also help ease the pain. The client is susceptible to respiratory infections because the retroperitoneal fluid raises the diaphragm, which causes the client to take shallow, guarded abdominal breaths. Therefore, measures such as turning, coughing, and deep breathing are instituted. Antacids and anticholinergics may be prescribed to suppress GI secretions. That's all I have for this video. Please like, share, let me know if you have any questions. If not, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.